Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization for our International Women's Day panel discussion under the theme Digital Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality. Uh, my name is Lenise Collins, and I'm a Senior Public Information Officer with CTBTO here in Vienna, Austria, and I'll be moderating our discussion today. I am so excited uh, by the panel that we have joining us and really looking forward to a very rich uh, discussion and taking your questions afterward. Technology and innovation are key to advancing gender equality and supporting women and girls worldwide. Digital technologies can enable better access to education and information and to social and economic opportunities. And yet we have a very persistent digital gender gap and this digital divide prevents women and girls from becoming both developers and consumers of technology and it perpetuates inequalities. The inclusion of women is crucial to ensure that their concerns and their experiences are integrated in the design and the development of products and services, and really to address the global challenges that we face in the 21st century. Here at CTBTO, we rely on state-of-the-art technology and innovation to achieve our mandate, which is an end to nuclear testing and to monitor, monitor the globe worldwide for nuclear tests. We believe that women play a vital role in applying inclusive and in transformative technologies to the work that we do. The aim of our session today is to bring together different stakeholders to discuss CTBTO's approach and applications for addressing the digital divide and how our capacity building activities and innovative projects promote women's inclusion in the field of nuclear nonproliferation. I am so happy to be joined by an incredibly distinguished panel today with participants from all over the world. Um, our participants include Mariama Mahdi, who is the principal point of contact and data manager for CTBT relevant functions and a seismic analyst at the National Data Center for the Union of the Comoros. We're also joined by Paula Garcia Pena, who is a station manager for CTBTO IMS stations with the Chilean Nuclear Energy Commission. And she is also a working group B co-task leader for support to provisional operations, which supports our station operations around the world. We're also happy to be joined by Tatiana Boitsova. She's a training officer here at CTBTO in our on-site inspection division, and she was also a mentor in our 2022 CTBTO mentoring program. We're also joined by Rusal al Dulemi, who is an associate services officer with the International Data Center here at CTBTO. And last but certainly not least, we're joined by Sri Sundari Retanoasi. She's a nuclear safeguards officer at the National Nuclear Energy Agency of Indonesia, and she was a participant uh, as a mentee in the 2022 CTBTO mentoring program. Uh, and she has also participated in training workshops offered by our on-site inspection division. I want to welcome all of you here today and thank you for joining us. And just a quick reminder to our participants that we will be taking your questions. So if there's anything you'd like to ask, please don't forget to drop your questions in the chat. Um, ladies, thank you for joining me. Mariama, I'm going to start our conversation off with you because um, the Union of the Comoros is a country that has ratified the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty relatively recently uh, in 2021, and you played a role in that ratification. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and how your background as a scientist and your familiarity with the work of CTBTO contributed to you being able to advocate for the treaty at such a high level? Thank you very much for, for inviting me to this talk. Um, first of all, I would like to thank very much uh, two, two main persons in my country. Former uh, ambassador to the United Nations, uh, Mr. Maruf, and the Director General of Legal and Political Affairs for our um, uh, foreign affairs. The process of the ratification has been a long process for at least for let's say one year 
the first um, uh, the first part of the other uh, process was to uh, go through the different meeting with uh, between us and the uh, foreign affairs discussing about how interesting the treaty is for our country. And the second part is to discuss directly with the parliament itself. And both of these two parts, we had to, to, to discuss so many, so many uh, times. Mariama, yes, I'm so sorry. Could I just yeah. ask you quickly, um, your camera is not on, and I was wondering if you could turn your camera on. We don't see you. I have my camera on. Um, I know we did our my, technical my camera run. Is on. Oh. oh, let's see. My camera is on. Now we see you. Wonderful. Okay. Now okay. we see you. Go ahead and pick up where you left off talking about this process of ratification. Okay, thank you very much. So I was saying that there is two main, there has been two main parts that we need to go through the long, long process of the ratification. First of all, we got to discuss with the foreign affairs, which is the basic of the place where discussion are made firstly. And the second part was to discuss with the parliament itself. So we got so many discussion between those two bodies. And the, the, the main purpose that I got to explain them how it is important for this ratific ratification is the basics of the knowledge uh, uh, for the young generation. I was, uh, my position was to tell them that there is something that we can't not ignore. Technologies right now. Yes, because the question I got so many several times during those di discussion, why does a country like Comora Islands, why, why nuclear? And I got to explain them that it is two, two main parts that we need to, to undertake. Firstly, first of all, the observation and the verification through nuclear. The second one is the civil and scientific applications. So we have to know that science and technology is the very, the most basic thing that we need to go through. And uh, my position was to explain them how technology is very, very important for uh, for our young people. And I got to tell them, to explain them that this is something that has been done by, by, by people before us because the signature has been done on 12 December 1996 when I was a very, very little, I mean, little, little girl. So this is the second process. But as we are not yet a nuclear test, I mean, a nuclear neutral country, we got to know how to differentiate between a nuclear test and a and, and, and natural event. This is first. And the second one is to know how to use technologies for science and civilian application for students. And we got the first meeting in 2018 with Dr. Lassie Nazarbo, former executive secretary to the Comoros. And we got to explain people at the parliament how it is very important for these technologies and to ratify the treaty so our countries can go ahead with technology and the young generation. So from that, I got so many young young girls from uh, coming to my office and ask me about more knowledge about this technology, and that was the process began. And in 2021, uh, we got in 19 February, if I do remember very well that date. Of course, that was uh, all our instruments were deposited to the United Nations, so that we ratify that day. And since that day. I got so many young uh, ladies coming uh, to my office and want to know about the technologies. And then as a process has already started with, with uh, between me and them. So this is how we got them. I can't explain the whole process, as I said, because it's one year process. So I just limited my talk here because I, I know that uh, we, we have a short moment. Thank you very much. Mariama, that is uh, incredibly inspiring because the approach that you took, and this is a question that we hear often, um, you know, what is the benefit for countries that may not have nuclear weapons or that have never conducted nuclear tests? Um, so this is the fact that you focused on the benefit of the technology 
to a rising generation of young people, the scientific implications for this uh, is really inspiring um, because this is something that, that is quite a benefit uh, no matter what um, the situation of, of your country in terms of having nuclear technology, having uh, a nuclear weapons program, and the fact that so many young women then came to you to learn more about how they could apply this, how they could learn more, how they could be a part of this is absolutely um, amazing and really inspiring. Um, next, I, thank you. I want to um, bring uh, Paula into the conversation um, because she has such um, a varied background. And so, Paula, I want to turn to you because you work incredibly closely with CTBTO as the station manager for all the international monitoring stations in Chile, eight in total, which is a significant amount uh, for one country. Um, you're also the co-task leader for Working Group B, which we have here um, in, our, in at CTBTO, which oversees our work, and you work on support related to station operations. Uh, but you've also participated in many capacity building workshops and trainings offered by CTBTO. So, Paula, I wanted to ask you, um, first, uh, Paula, if you could turn your video on, your camera on. I see that uh, we just have your initials there. Um, so, if I could just get you to turn your camera on. And um, then I wanted you to sort of talk a bit about how the trainings that you have undergone and participated in, um, how important is it for women in STEM to have access to these opportunities? Okay, can you hear me? We can hear you, but we don't okay. see you. So maybe if you could turn your camera off and turn it back on. Oh, okay, I'm gonna do that because it's on. I can mm -hmm. see my video. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna try. Can you see me now? Uh, not yet. I can hear you. Um, it, yeah. Mariana, did you do something special to uh, put on your camera? Because it's, I can see me there. And I don't know what is going on. Mariama, did you do, did you turn off your camera and turn it back on? Because we were having the same issue with you initially. Um, yes. I did it. Okay. So I can get it. Okay. Well. Great. She has to, to try again. Great. Paula, maybe yes, just turn it off and back on and let's see if we can. Yeah. And yeah, Mariama. I have done it many times. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I did twice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is always the joys of, of technology. Um, yes, exactly. Well, Paola, could you tell us a, li a little bit about, you have um, participated in trainings uh, across CTBTO with all of our technical divisions. Um, you're the station manager for eight CTBTO IMS stations. Tell us a little bit about why you think it's so important for women in STEM to have access to these kinds of training and capacity building opportunities. Yeah. Oh, uh, I was so focused on trying to fix the camera, <laughs> but I'm going to answer your question. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, we are very uh, much related to CTBTO uh, from Satin because uh, all models in, um, in different countries are different. Um, here we have everything here in this institution. We have the NDC, we have also all the institutions, just except for one of them, that it belongs to a university. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, we, we need a CTVTO in all aspects. That's because I am involved in, a, in a, a, a related activities about, um, about technical stuff that are mainly my main field here because we need to be in charge of the stations. Uh, they are very important for the main purpose and also for science. So uh, besides the use we, we, that, that is the main use uh, to find nuclear explosions, we use them uh, with scientific people. So um, now um, we have 
like one uh, hydroacoustic station. I don't know how familiar everybody is with these stations, but we have one hydroacoustic station, two infrasound stations, and three ra radionuclei station plus two uh, seismic stations, auxiliary stations. So uh, that's a lot of work because you need to be in charge uh, of the land where the stations are. You need also to worry about uh, the workers that are there because we need uh, local operators in every station. Uh, we need to take all about the technical things with CTVTO uh, uh, in a, as a daily basis. So there are a lot of things that we need to take care of. And also the training here is very, very important. I have been trying to include more women in this uh, operation stuff, but it's hard to find women sometimes when we ask for, for uh, the participation of them. It's like they, um, they don't study careers um, that are related to maintenance maybe. I think uh, one of the reasons are because it's a man's word sometimes. I, I'm going to tell you a story, a very personal story. When I studied engineering, uh, I had to choose between management or maintenance. And a person, a man, told me it's better that you don't uh, choose uh, maintenance because probably you are not going to be hired. So I, that was something uh, that made me think a lot because, and I doubt it, and I didn't do it. I, I chose management. So probably it's the reason because many women in their own houses are thinking about choosing something that uh, doesn't require too much physical effort or be in the field. But I think we need to change that. It's, it's going to be a process. Probably it won't be uh, tomorrow. Okay, so uh, that comes from the families and school mainly, I think. Mm -hmm. Paola, thank you so much for that. I mean, I'm really struck by, um, you know, how you described how women are often discouraged from pursuing certain areas of study or certain careers uh, before they even get started, uh, that they're not encouraged to uh, sort of study these things that are that may traditionally be considered men's work. And so uh, the fact that you raised that issue of the pipeline uh, and that it is hard to find uh, women candidates uh, to participate in these trainings and these opportunities is very important. And this is something that we're going to come back to in our conversation when we talk with Sri Sundari and Tatiana uh, about how do we address that very problem that you've identified. But I think these sorts of attitudes that you encountered are still attitudes that we see today, discouraging women and girls from studying certain fields. Um, thank you so much for that. Uh, I want to bring into the conversation now uh, another colleague of, of ours at CTBTO, Rusol Aldelemi, who is uh, a, a services officer here with our International Data Center. Um, and Rusol, I was wondering if you could describe for our audience some of the applications of the data that are collected by our monitoring system. We've heard from Paola who, uh, and Mariama who work with our uh, NDCs, who work with our international monitoring stations. Um, you receive the data on this end. So can you talk to our audience a little bit about how um, some of the uses and applications of our data and how these may have a particular relevance to SDG 5 on gender equality? Thank you, Linis, for having me today at this valuable and unique discussion. It's such a delight to join these wonderful women today here. I'm also delighted to share with you the incredible uh, benefits that the CTBTO's International Monitoring System, IMS, offers beyond the primary aim. The aim, I mean, is detecting nuclear explosions. In order to do so, a vast amount of data can be utilized for broader civil and scientific purposes, such as helping to save lives in tsunamis, tracking potential harmful fallout from nuclear accidents, and expanding our knowledge in the Earth and the natural world. 
as a woman, we have a unique opportunity to contribute to this critical uh, effort to save lives and minimize the damage that caused by a disaster such as a tsunami. Let me show it to you and our audience uh, today on an example. One way that CTBT data produces broader benefits for humanity is through tsunami warning. CTBT data can assist the state signatories to issue rapid and more accurate uh, public safety warnings. The way it works is by identifying the earthquakes and any other seismic event that could cause tsunami. In 2004, after the earthquake and tsunami off the coast of Sumatra in Indonesia, the CTBTO was instructed to supply monitoring data to national tsunami warning centers. And today we have more than 160 seismic and hydrocaustic stations in a high tsunami risk areas that are sending near real time data. Therefore, during the massive earthquake and tsunami in that struck Japan in March in 2011, IMS data held authorities to issue timely warnings that allowed many people to flee to higher ground. Today, we have 20 warning centers in 19 countries which are a treaty signatories, have signed a tsunami warning agreement with CTBTO. Uh, since then, the UNESCO has recognized and acknowledged the uh, National Warning Tsunami Centers designated by CTBTO state signatories. And according to, uh, to UNESCO, 58 tsunamis have claimed more than 260,000 lives, surpassing any other natural hazards over the past century. More are expected as the sea level rises due to climate change. As a woman, we can all play a vital role in this global effort to harness the power of CTBT data to reduce the risk and damage caused by tsunamis. We can take a pride in the fact that the CTBTO's data have demonstrated to be more uh, reliable and speedy data than other resources. Uh, it's up to three minutes of lead time resulting in a tsunami alert that can potentially save many lives. By utilizing IMS data, we can not only save lives, but also contribute to research on ocean processes and marine life, sustainable development, and expanding our understanding of the natural world. We can be the driving force behind creating a secure and more safer future for our communities by utilizing IMS data. I invite all women researchers to come together to harness the power of IMS data and make positive difference in our world. Together, let us make our mark and leave last impact on the world. Thank you. Rousseau, thank you so much. That is, um, we will um, circle back to that in the Q&A, but that is such a concrete example of uh, the application of our data and how it could contribute to a safer world beyond uh, the, uh, the, you know, the application to monitoring for nuclear tests. Uh, and also a very clear connection to how it can, its relevance to SDG5. Uh, we know from many studies and from unfortunate experience that uh, when things like tsunami strike that women and girls are often disproportionately impacted in terms of uh, health outcomes, economic outcomes. So anything that we can do to contribute to efforts to save lives actually does help in advancing uh, SDG, SDG 5, particularly when it comes to disaster risk reduction, mitigation and resilience efforts. So thank you so much for explaining that so clearly. Um, I want to I want to thank um, Mariama and Paula and Rousseau for making these sort of very clear connections between the work that we do at CTBTO and the promotion of inclusion of of women in science and innovation. And I actually to bring in our our next speaker, I actually want to go back to what Paula was saying about her very personal story, where she was discouraged from pursuing a particular career path. Um, 
because we know that this affects our, our pipeline of talent uh, that we want to attract into these fields. Um, so I want to bring in now uh, someone who represents uh, the, the new generation of women in nuclear and nuclear nonproliferation, uh, Sri Sundari Retanasi. Shri Sundari, um, you are um, a nuclear safeguards officer, uh, and you recently participated in the first ever installment of the CTBTO mentorship program for women in STEM. And I want to talk to you a little bit about your career and why you wanted to participate in this program and what benefits you feel it had for you uh, personally and professionally. All right. Thank you, Lani. So, uh, at the beginning, I was really interested in participating in the CTBTO mentoring program. It was like I would like to find a community between early career women in STEM in a safe space and a supportive way, which actually is kind of like quite challenging for us. And this mentoring program is such a brilliant platform for us to to be in a community with the people who have the similar interest and. So besides, I learned a lot about uh, the OSI in CTBTO, which is related to the hard skills. I also discovered a lot about how to improve our soft skills, uh, especially my mentor. Like she really helped me a lot how to build my confidence, how to improve a lot of skills, how to strengthen our competencies, and how to improve the motivation for being an early career woman in STEM. Um, besides of that, as I already mentioned, that it's such a safe and supportive community. So between us mentees, we could exchange our ideas, we could exchange our personal experience, that it really helped us to, to gain more psychs to gain more insights so how we we can be more cooperative how we can be more communicative in order to build such a uh, supportive interaction between co-workers which i found out that it's really a rare uh, platform for us to find which commonly in any other learning platform it's mostly always talked about something that related into technical stuff. So this is really a brilliant platform and I'm really grateful for being uh, a mentee in this program. And I really encourage other women who is uh, in their early career to join this program because this is really um, brilliant and excellent program, which we can gain a lot of skill booster through this program. So yeah, I'm really grateful for this program. Thank you. You know, Sri Sundari, what, I mean, what you said about community, that yeah. is so incredibly important uh, exactly. and how isolating it can be, especially when you're one of a few, um, you know, women in, a, you know, the hard sciences, the sciences, mm -hmm. not having that community of, you know, the safe environment that you talked about, um, exactly. how important that is. So, yeah, it's kind of like... A we find really the interaction between women to women. So this is really the implementation of women encouraging another woman in a similar uh, interest for us as uh, people who are working in a STEM. So it's kind of like we could discover, actually we could discover more about ourselves, but through other people experiences, through other people ideas. So the exchanging are, uh, are what happened here, which really help us to boost our skills that maybe we couldn't find before we have this kind of safe and supportive community. That's excellent. And I, I just really want to commend uh, the colleagues here at CTBTO who put that mentorship program together uh, because that is one of the goals uh, that we have with um, with our sort of talent pipeline and acquisition is to create the space for more women to have a seat at the table, to create the room uh, for women to step forward and, and, and with confidence that exactly. they belong in, in these spaces 
practice. And so it's so great to hear um, about your experience with the mentorship program. And we certainly invite anyone who's on uh, the session today, who's listening today to go to our website. You can learn more about the mentorship program. It's featured in the banner uh, uh, on our website. Uh, and so we would invite anyone who is interested and has questions to please learn more about it because we will be offering other installments of it. Um, which brings us to um, our, our last speaker, last but certainly not least, uh, a colleague here, Tatiana Boitsova, who's a training officer in our on-site inspection division. Uh, Tatiana served as a mentor in the mentorship program last year, and uh, knowing her distinguished career that she's had, um, Tatiana, I wanted to ask you to, to talk a little bit about why you wanted to serve as a mentor, and how did you benefit from from mentoring uh, a new generation of young women in, in STEM. Um, thank you very much for having me here today and for this insightful question, Lenise. Um, when I was, uh, when I joined CTPTO in 2021, I was um, very eager to find out about uh, how this organization um, with a such vital world, uh, such vital role in world's safety and security, can um, like increase awareness of female experts uh, about uh, its um, truly global mission and increase their involvement in uh, its work. So uh, when I started to work in uh, OSI division. In other words, OSI, um, I found out that uh, the participants of uh, many uh, expert meetings and training activities supposed to be nominated by their government, which of course limited the access of the public to this kind of events. So the changing moment was uh, when I found out, also found out that uh, CTBTO is launching its first mentoring program and I did not hesitate to join it. I really think that this kind of a program uh, helps um, er early career women in STEM to gain more knowledge about uh, their different international organizations and their agendas, uh, in particular CTBTO, and also um, to gain uh, knowledge about existing uh, opportunities for future career development as well as the um, knowledge about um, how they can overcome and gain also knowledge and support how they can overcome their um, uh, challenges or uh, any limitations that they can meet in their work. So um, I really hope and think uh, that I mean, these, um, uh, when they Really hope that uh, the knowledge that Mint has gained through this program and uh, will help them in their in future to um, overcome all challenges that they will meet. As for CTBTO, I think it's a very great opportunity to um, through this uh, talent pipeline to increase their presence in different uh, geographical uh, regions as well as uh, to. Um, as well as uh, to uh, raise the aware awareness among female uh, but uh, female experts around the world that they can uh, it can gain the support of uh, the women in reaching its goals so also um, after this uh, mentoring program um, to support this great uh, initiative OSI division together in collaboration with the um, CTBTO Human Resources um, decided to provide a unique opportunity for the uh, mentees and to provide uh, this opportunity is about to providing them um, a way to be considered to be nominated as an observers for the upcoming regional OSI regional introductory course. So this will um, supposed to help them to um, gain more knowledge about the ultimate verification measure of the CTBTO, which is oil science fashion, to increase their knowledge about uh, how they 
uh, about the OSI treaty, uh, treat, uh, OSI related treaty provisions, <laughs> and uh, to gain an experience of um, application different OSI related approved techniques and equipment they maybe they will never use in their uh, current uh, job which is i consider a great opportunity as being also the participant of the third training cycle so it gives a little a lot of uh, new opportunities and new knowledge to the female experts yeah <laughs> thank you that no tatiana thank you so much i mean um, the fact that you brought up that it's really about um, sharing knowledge, because many people don't know that these opportunities are even out there. They have to be nominated oftentimes by their governments, so they may not be aware that there are these opportunities. So even increasing the scope of knowledge, you know, people who who know about these, you know, these opportunities that are available, um, the fact that it does help to increase geographical representation, uh, that we want representation from around the world, that the work that we do impacts a global community. And it's funny that you mentioned the regional course, because I think that Sri Sundari actually participated in the uh, regional course that was offered in Chiang Mai in January following her uh, mentorship, uh, her mentorship cycle in the fall. Um, Sri, uh, Sri Sundari, were you, did you, you participated in the Chiang Mai uh, regional uh, exercise, didn't, didn't you, in uh, Thailand? Yeah, I did, and it was really, really amazing experience. Like, that's how I implement all of the soft skills that I learned through the mentorship program because uh, fortunately I got the opportunity, opportunity for being a team leader for the field team exercise and it was really great experience for me for negotiating and also for managing a team in a short time. So I learned a lot from my mentor and then I implement directly on the uh, RIC24. So it was really amazing for me and I really encourage all of those mentees, I mean my colleagues in, in the mentorship program to apply for the RIC25 because it's, it's going to be really an amazing experience for us as an early career woman in STEM. Excellent. Um, you can also go to our website. We also did a write up about uh, that experience for those of you who are interested in learning more um, on our website at ctbto.org. You can find information about uh, upcoming events, including virtual career fairs. We have a virtual career fair uh, happening on March 16th. Uh, so please, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Cent uh, Central European time, please check our website for details on that if you would like to attend that virtual career fair um, and learn more about the trainings and events and opportunities that we have. Before I get to some questions, some additional questions for our speakers, I just wanted to remind people if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. Uh, but just also as a quick reminder that this year uh, from June 19th through the 23rd, we will have our science and technology conference happening here in Vienna at the Hofburg. Uh, it is a chance for you to join over 1,000 scientists, engineers, technologists, uh, researchers, academics, people in the field of nuclear nonproliferation, journalists, civil society, and youth uh, groups to discuss the challenges that we face. Uh, so please learn more about that. It's a great opportunity uh, if you are in this field to interact with people and to meet and make connections and network and learn so much. So. Mariama, while we wait to see if any of our participants have any questions, I wanted to go back to you to find out how you encourage uh, young women, all these young women who were coming to you expressing interest, um, how are you um, encouraging them to stay interested in the field, to pursue careers? What advice would, were you giving these young women who would come to you? Oh, sorry, Mariama, you're, you're muted. If you could just undo your mute button there. Oh, I think you're still muted. Oh. Mariama, I think you're still muted for some reason. I, we can't hear you. I think 
I think I'm in the back right now, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for this question. I think um, from my early um, uh, young uh, professional uh, career, uh, it was very important for me to show uh, within my institution because between two, 2013 to 2014 or 15, something like that, I have started uh, to uh, make uh, some presentation or make uh, joining more uh, students from the University of Comoros. And I went by myself uh, gathering all these young people and tell them, please, you can come to my institution so that we can discuss if you want to learn more about these technologies, because I know that uh, you are you you are going to be interested about all those technologies because you know the thing my position as usually, of course that the CTBT is basically nuclear test verification, but as the question come back to me every time why this nuclear I'm trying just to show them that of course if you learn how to discriminate between a nuclear test and a seismic event. That is very, very good. So if you want to learn about that, you please you can come to me, to me at the NDC. The second part that I really position myself to explain them is that you are living in, in very small islands, very four small islands. So you know about, we are exposed to, for example, uh, effect of tsunami, as it was the case in Indonesia in 2004. Far from, but we were exposed. This is first. The second, we have volcano, and now we have two volcanoes, because we have one volcano from the main island, and we have uh, a volcano from uh, in the fourth island. Three, we have so many activities. Recently in Mayotte in 2018, we have a very huge swarm activities of the seismic activities. We have landslide. We have participated to many uh, disaster in related to landslide. So my, my position at that time is to show them that uh, these technologies, if you learn about infrasound, definitely you will, you will be interested in volcano. If you learn about hydroacoustic, definitely you will be interested in tsunami. If you you learn about seismic technology, uh, definitely you will be interested in seismic activities. And radionuclide, because there is a civil and scientific application from radionuclide, and this is basically the medical treatment. So um, I got several, several uh, meetings with this young uh, university and at the American corner, Comoros, and other center. So I went them to tell them how it is useful for you to learn more about this. So th that moment I realized that the interest, there was a huge interest. And I got one more interesting question from these young people. And one asked me, so do you think we do have to have one infrasound? As you said, you explain us, do you think that we, we have to have one infrasound station in Comoros. I say definitely. Maybe I will take this question and prepare it for the next discussion with the CTBT. But that is a very good point. But because we got one station from Madagascar, I think it's not enough. And bringing this question for me is really important so that I can find a way of discussing with those people, with those responsible, so that we can go for. And this is how. I could bring all these young and mostly mostly the young young girl to to understand how CTBD and the IDC International Data Center data and IMS uh, data and, and IDC product are really crucial for us as small islands. Amazing. Um, such so many applications and so relevant in the lives of so many people. I know Paola uh, has another meeting that she is rushing off to. So just in case we lose her, I want to, to thank her so much uh, for for joining us. And Paola, just as um, you know, a, a last word. Thank you so much for sharing your personal story. Um, but also, I wanted to ask you, how do you think that member states can increase their efforts to create more opportunities for women to be nominated to participate in these things? Because as we heard, you often have to be nominated by your country. What can they do to increase the representation of women? Well, now I think you can hear me and see me. Right? 
Yes. Finally. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm gonna be very short. I think uh, we need more communication with the with the permanent mission. I think that is essential. They change. They change a lot. So I have talked to people in for some missions in Latin America, and they don't know much about the these technologies, about what CTBTO involves. So I think it would be nice every time uh, some uh, operators, some station managers are there, maybe we can talk to them and, and in our language, sometimes that is good too, and explain them uh, what, what this is about. And it worked for me um, like uh, before the pandemic. So I think it, that would be great because then they can communicate this to the universities, different institutions, and um, they can try to do more things like promote STEM education for girls, promote um, creativity. Maybe uh, if you go to a school and talk about this, the girls would be would feel very inspired and think that that could be that woman there. In my case, sometimes I do it. That can be your uh, model to follow. So I think it's important to promote this from CTBTO to the permanent missions and then to all institutions. And of course, encourage female models, as I said it before. But I think that is the correct path for this. Paula, thank you so much. And I just want to let our participants know that Paula is in Vienna, but she has flown from, from Chile. Uh, so she has from one of our stations there. So we thank you so much for, for joining us today. We know that you are incredibly jet lagged, that you have been, you've traveled halfway around the world. Uh, no. So. Are, Sorry, just to specify something. I was in Chile, and but I was in an island in Chile. Uh, yeah, yes. And then, I have to travel Saturday to Vienna. Yes. Okay, you're coming. So you yeah. will you will definitely be jet lagged by the time you get here. But I know that you were you were on a remote island uh, at one of the yeah. IMS stations. So thank you so much yeah. for joining us. For those of you who can stay for just a few more minutes, uh, Paula, I know you have to run. So feel free to thank drop off when much. you must. Thank you. We have a question Thanks. from uh, Helene Rood from Norsar, from one of our, our partners. Uh, Helene, I think that you can uh, unmute yourself. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. yes, fantastic. Yeah, I got a bit stressed there for a moment because I wasn't able to turn on my camera either. So, <laughs> hello everyone. Uh, some of you know me, I guess. Uh, um, like Paula, I'm a, I'm a task leader in the working group B on cross cutting issues. And uh, in the last working group B, as some of you may have noticed, we managed actually to get a decision saying that we would like to increase that working group B shall work towards increasing the number of female experts uh, participating in the actual working group B sessions, as well as related activities like trainings, um, OSI, uh, SMT. Uh, so, um, and I'm basically, um, yeah, I actually appreciate Paula suggesting now she left, but I think it's uh, because uh, I'm basically I'm asking for your help and suggestions. Uh, I've opened a discussion on the ECS on this, so any input is extremely uh, um, welcome. Um, best practices from your regions, from your countries, uh, in you know how to attract women to studying these things, yes. to hiring them, to employing them, to getting them involved with this work, anything is really uh, welcome. So I'm basically, uh, yeah, uh, any help in that regard would be appreciated. And I also wanted, actually, I was thinking about what Paula was saying. I was already planning to organize meetings with regional groups and, and missions in Vienna. Uh, and I think if any of you uh, would like to actually join me uh, with your you know, backgrounds, and if you're in Vienna, uh, that would be very useful. So we can we can talk about this, but then, oh, it doesn't have to be this working group B, but you know, for the future, basically like Paula suggested, but you know, talk about your own experiences and talk to the missions directly. Uh, I think that could be interesting uh, if you if you think so as well, of course. 
Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to to let you know, uh, and also really any suggestions and humor would be really uh, welcomed. Um, yeah, and also the Young Professionals Network. Some of you know that Northstar is coordinating and cooperating with PPS. Uh, there is also few women, so you know we started counting, and I think only you know 20% are women, unfortunately there as well. So I guess it's just mirroring the the situation, but you know, uh, yeah. So for once of you who are on here who don't know about it, you know, please check us out and uh, join us. Uh, technical, scientific, um, and also I think it's uh, yeah. An interesting place for getting to know others and also for you know future jobs so i won't take more of your time uh but thanks so much and uh let's keep this uh this discussion going and uh please uh, join the discussion on the ecs as well or write to me i can put my uh, address in the uh, chat thanks so much or any questions thanks as well so i'm much, happy to take them Aline. I am so sorry we have to uh, cut it short. Uh, we're a little bit over time, but uh, thank you so much for such a rich conversation. Um, Helene just mentioned the um, Young Professionals Network. I just dropped a link in the chat for those of you who are interested, uh, who are early career practitioners. Um, please uh, make note of that. And also, if you're interested in joining uh, the CYG, the CTBTO youth group, uh, that would be great. Just before we leave, I want to thank everyone who joined us today. Um, and I want to remind you that we still have two sessions left in our Spotlight series. On Tuesday, 7 March, you can join the UN Office on Drugs and Crime for their discussion, Women and Cyber Organized Crime at 2 o'clock Central European time. And on Thursday, 9 in March, the UN Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, will host a discussion on women as levers of change for transformative, sustainable, and inclusive technologies, also at 1400 hours CET, uh, and links to register will be available in the chat. Thank you all so much for joining us today, and thank you for staying over a little bit long for this rich discussion, uh, and please uh, remember that International Women's Day is just not one day, it's every day, and please continue to do all that you can to help uh, build on women women's inclusion and the promotion and protection of women's rights and women's inclusion in all sectors of life. Thank you so much for joining us today and uh, have a great rest of your week. Bye. Bye. Thank you.